Welcome to a half hour of Mind Webs. Short stories from the worlds of speculative fiction. This story comes from the book edited by Damon Knight, titled Nebula Award Stories. It's a Nebula Award Best Short Story of 1965 by Harlan Ellison. Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTok man. There are always those who ask, what is it all about? For those who need to ask, for those who need points sharply made, who need to know where it's at, this. The mass of men serve the state thus, not as men mainly, but as machines with their bodies. They are the standing army and the militia, jailers, constables, posse, comitatus, etc. In most cases, there's no free exercise, whatever, of the judgment or of the moral sense but they put themselves on a level with wood and earth and stones. And wooden men can perhaps be manufactured that will serve the purposes as well. Such command no more respect than men of straw or a lump of dirt. They have the same sort of worth only as horses and dogs. Yet such as these even are commonly esteemed good citizens. Others, as most legislators, politicians, lawyers, ministers, and office holders, serve the state chiefly with their heads, and as they rarely make any moral distinctions, they are as likely to serve the devil, without intending it, as God. A very few, as heroes, patriots, martyrs, reformers in the great sense, and men, serve the state with their consciences also, and so necessarily resist it for the most part, and they are commonly treated as enemies by it. Henry David Thoreau from civil disobedience. That's the heart of it. Now begin in the middle, and later learn the beginning. The end will take care of itself. But because it was the very world it was, the very world they had allowed it to become, for months his activities did not come to the alarmed attention of the ones who kept the machine functioning smoothly, the ones who poured the very best butter over the cams and mainsprings of the culture. Not until it had become obvious that somehow, some way, he had become a notoriety, a celebrity, perhaps even a hero for what officialdom inescapably tagged an emotionally disturbed segment of the populace, did they turn it over to the TikTok man and his legal machinery. But by then, because it was the very world it was, and they had no way to predict he would happen, possibly a strain of disease long defunct now, suddenly reborn in a system where immunity had been forgotten, had lapsed, He had been allowed to become too real. Now, he had form and substance. He had become a personality, something they had filtered out of the system many decades ago. But there it was, and there he was, a very definitely imposing personality. In certain circles, middle-class circles, it was thought disgusting. Vulgar ostentation anarchistic, shameful. In others, there was only sniggering. Those strata were thought as subjugated to form in ritual, niceties, proprieties. But down below, ah, down below, where the people always needed their saints and sinners, their bread and circuses, their heroes and villains, he was considered a Bolivar, a Napoleon, a Robin Hood, a Dick Bong, Ace of Aces, a Jesus, a Yomo Kenyatta. And at the top, where, like socially attuned shipwreck Kellys, every tremor and vibration threatens to dislodge the wealthy, powerful, and titled from their flagpoles, he was considered a menace, a heretic, a rebel, a disgrace, a peril. He was known down the line to the very heartmeat core, but the important reactions were high above and far below, at the very top, at the very bottom. So his file was turned over, along with his time card and his cardio plate, 
to the office of the TikTok man. The TikTok man, very much over six feet tall, often silent, a soft, purring man when things went time wise. The TikTok man. Even in the cubicles of the hierarchy, where fear was generated, seldom suffered, he was called the TikTok man. But no one called him that to his mask. You don't call a man a hated name, not when that man behind his mask is capable of revoking the minutes, the hours, the days, the nights, the years of your life. He was called the master timekeeper to his mask. It was safer that way. This is what he is, said the TikTok man with genuine softness, but not who he is. This time card I'm holding in my left hand has a name on it, but it is the name of what he is, not who he is. This cardio plate here in my right hand is also named, but not whom named, merely what named. Before I can exercise proper revocation, I have to know who this what is. To his staff, all the ferrets, all the loggers, all the finks, all the comics, even the minis, he said, Who is this Harlequin? He wasn't purring smoothly. Time-wise, it was a jangle. However, it was the longest single speech they had ever heard him utter at one time, the staff, the ferrets, the loggers, the finks, the comics, but not the minis, who usually weren't around to know in any case, but even they scurried to find out. Who is the Harlequin? High above the third level of the city, he crouched on the humming aluminum frame platform of the airboat. Poof, airboat indeed. Swizzle skid is what it was, with a tow rack jerry-rigged, and stared down at the neat Mondrian arrangement of the buildings. Somewhere nearby, he could hear the metronomic left-right-left left of the 2.47 p.m. shift entering the Timken roller-bearing plant in their sneakers. A minute later, precisely, he heard the softer right-left-right right of the 5 a.m. formation going home. An elfish grin spread across his tanned features and his dimples appeared for a moment. Then scratching at his thatch of auburn hair, he shrugged within his motley as though girding himself for what came next and threw the joystick forward and bent into the wind as the airboat dropped. He skimmed over a sidewalk, purposely dropping a few feet to crease the tassels of the ladies of fashion and inserting thumbs and large ears... He stuck out his tongue, rolled his eyes, and went, Wugga, wugga, wugga. It was a minor diversion. One pedestrian skittered and tumbled, sending parcels every which way. Another wet herself, a third keeled slantwise, and the walk was stopped automatically by the servitors until she could be resuscitated. It was a minor diversion. Then he swirled away on a vagrant breeze and was gone. I hold. As he rounded the corners of the time motion study building, he saw the shift just boarding the slide walk. With practiced motion and an absolute conservation of movement, they sidestepped up onto the slow strip and, in a chorus line reminiscent of a Busby Berkeley film of the antediluvian 1930s, advanced across the strips, ostrich walking, till they were lined up on the express strip. Once more, in anticipation, the elfin grin spread, and there was a tooth missing back there on the left side. He dipped, skimmed, and swooped over them. And then, scrunching about on the airboat, he released the holding pins that fastened shut the ends of the homemade pouring troughs that kept his cargo from dumping prematurely. And as he worked the trough pins, the airboat slid over the factory workers and $150,000 worth of jelly beans cascaded down on the express trip. Jelly beans... Millions and billions of purples and yellows and greens and licorice and grape and raspberry and mint and round and smooth and crunchy outside and soft and mealy inside and sugary and bouncing, jouncing, tumbling, glittering, clattering, skittering fell on the heads and shoulders and hard hats and carapaces of the Timken workers, tinkling on the slide walk and bouncing away and rolling about underfoot and filling the sky on their way down with all the colors of joy and childhood and holidays. 
coming down in a steady rain, a solid wash, a torrent of colors and sweetness out of the sky from above, and entering the universe of sanity and metronomic order with quite mad cuckoo newness, jelly beans. The shift workers howled and laughed and were pelted and broke ranks. And the jelly beans managed to work their way into the mechanism of the slide walks, after which there was a hideous scraping as the sound of a million fingernails rasped down a quarter of a million blackboards, followed by a coughing and a sputtering, and then the slide walks all stopped, and everyone was dumped this away and that away in a jack straw tumble, and still laughing and popping little jelly bean eggs of childish color into their mouths. It was a holiday and a jollity, an absolute insanity, a giggle, but the shift was delayed seven minutes. They did not get home for seven minutes. The master's schedule was thrown off by seven minutes. Quotas were delayed by inoperative slide walks for seven minutes. He had tapped the first domino on the line, and one after another, like chick, 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 the others had fallen. The system had been seven minutes worth of disrupted. It was a tiny matter, one hardly worthy of note, but in a society where the single driving force was order and unity and promptness and clock-like precision and attention to the clock, reverence of the gods of the passage of time, it was a disaster of major importance. So, he was ordered to appear before the TikTok man. It was broadcast across every channel of the communications web. He was ordered to be there at seven, damn it, on time. And they waited. And they waited. But he didn't show up until almost 10.30. At which time he merely sang a little song about moonlight in a place no one had ever heard of called Vermont. And vanished again. But they had all been waiting since seven. And it wrecked hell with their schedules. So the question remained, who is the Harlequin? But the unasked question, more important of the two, was, how did we get into this position where a laughing, irresponsible japer of Jabberwocky and Jive could disrupt our entire economic and cultural life with $150,000 worth of jelly beans? Jelly, for God's sake, beans. This is madness. Where did he get the money to buy $150,000 worth of jelly beans? They knew it would have cost that much because they had a team of situation analysts pulled off another assignment and rushed to the slidewalk scene to sweep up and count the candies and produce findings which disrupted their schedules and threw their entire branch at least a day behind. Jelly beans. Jelly beans? Now, wait a second. A second accounted for. No one has manufactured jelly beans for over a hundred years. Where did he get jelly beans? Well, that's another good question. More than likely, it will never be answered to your complete satisfaction. But then, how many questions ever are? The middle, you know. Here's the beginning, how it starts. A desk pad, day for day and turn each day. Nine o'clock, open the mail. 9.45, appointment with Planning Commission Board. 10.30, discuss installation progress charts with J.L. 11.45, pray for rain. 12, lunch. And so it goes. I'm sorry, Miss Grant, but the time for interviews was set at 2.30, and it's almost 5 now. I'm sorry you're late, but those are the rules. You'll have to wait till next year to submit application for this college again. And so it goes. No, oh, I couldn't wait, Fred. I had to be at Pierre Cartan's by 3, and you said you'd meet me under the clock in the terminal at 2.45, and you weren't there, so well, I had to go on. You're always late, Fred. If you'd been there, we could have sewed it up together. But, well, as it was, I uh, took the order alone. And so it goes. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Atterley, in reference to your son Gerald's constant tardiness, I am afraid we will have to suspend him from school unless some more reliable method can be instituted guaranteeing he will arrive at his classes on time. 
Granted, he is an exemplary student. His marks are high. His constant flouting of the schedules, however, of this school makes it impractical to maintain him in a system where the other children seem capable of getting where they are supposed to be on time. And so it goes. You cannot vote unless you appear at 8.45 a.m. I don't care if the script is good. I need it Thursday. Checkout time is 2 p.m. You got it here late. The job's taken. Sorry. Your salary has been docked for 20 minutes. Time lost. God, what time is it? I gotta run. And so it goes. And so it goes. And so it goes. And so it goes, 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 goes. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And one day, we no longer let time serve us. We serve time. And we are slaves of the schedule. Worshippers of the sun's passing bound into a life predicated on restrictions because, because the system will not function if we don't keep the schedule tight. Until it becomes more than a minor inconvenience to be late, it becomes a sin, then a crime, then a crime punishable by this. Effective 15 July, 2389, 12 midnight. The office of the master timekeeper will require all citizens to submit their time cards and cardio plates for processing. In accordance with statute 5557 SGH 999, governing the revocation of time per capita, all cardio plates will be keyed to the individual holder and... what they had done was devise a method of curtailing the amount of life a person could have. If he was ten minutes late, he lost ten minutes of his life. An hour was proportionately worth more revocation. If someone was consistently tardy, he might find himself, on a Sunday night, receiving a communique from the master timekeeper that his time had run out, and he would be turned off at high noon on Monday. Please straighten your affairs, sir. And so, by this simple scientific expedient, utilizing a scientific process held dearly secret by the TikTok man's office, the system was maintained. It was the only expedient thing to do. It was, after all, patriotic. The schedules had to be met. After all, there was a war on. But wasn't there always? Now, that is really disgusting, said the Harlequin, when Pretty Alice showed him the wanted poster. Disgusting and highly improbable. After all, this isn't the days of desperadoes. A wanted poster? You know, Alice noted, you speak with a great deal of inflection. I'm sorry. No need to be sorry. You're always saying I'm sorry. You have such massive guilt over it. It's really very sad. I'm sorry, he repeated and then pursed his lips so the dimples appeared momentarily. He hadn't wanted to say that at all. I have to go out again. I have to do something. Alice slammed her coffee bulb down on the counter. Oh, for God's sake, Everett. Can't you stay home just one night? Must you always be out in a ghastly clown suit running around annoying people? Uh, uh, Alice, I'm... He stopped and clapped the jester's hat onto his auburn thatch with a tiny tingling of bells. He rose, rinsed out his coffee bulb at the tap, and put it into the dryer for a moment. I have to go, Alice. She didn't answer. The fax box was purring, and she pulled a sheet out, read it, threw it toward him on the counter. It's about you, of course. You're ridiculous. He read it quickly. It said the TikTok man was trying to locate him. He didn't care. He was going out to be late again. At the door, dredging for an exit line, he hurled back petulantly. Well, you speak with inflection, too. Alice rolled her pretty eyes heavenward. Oh, you're ridiculous. The Harlequin stalked out, slamming the door, which sighed shut softly and locked itself. There was a gentle knock, and Alice got up with an exhalation of exasperated breath and opened the door. He stood there. I'll be back about 10.30, okay? She pulled a rueful face. Why do you tell me that? Why? You know you'll be late. 
You know it. You are always late. So why do you tell me these dumb things? She closed the door. On the other side, the Harlequin nodded to himself. Eh, yeah, she's right. She's always right. I'll be late. I'm always late. Why do I tell her these dumb things? He shrugged again and went off to be late once more. He had fired off the firecracker rockets that said, I will attend the 115th Annual International Medical Association invocation at 8 p.m. precisely. I do hope you will all be able to join me. The words had burned in the sky, and of course the authorities were there, lying in wait for him. They assumed, naturally, that he would be late. He arrived 20 minutes early. While they were setting up the spider webs to trap and hold him and blowing a large bullhorn, he frightened and unnerved them so their own moisturized encirclement webs sucked closed, and they were hauled up, kicking and shrieking high above the amphitheater's floor. The Harlequin laughed and laughed and apologized profusely. The physicians, gathered in solemn conclave, roared with laughter and accepted the Harlequin's apologies with exaggerated bowing and posturing. And a merry time was had by all, who thought the Harlequin was a regular foofara in fancy pants. All, that is, but the authorities, who had been sent out by the office of the TikTok man, who hung there like so much dockside cargo hauled up above the floor of the amphitheater in a most unseemly fashion. <laughs> The shopping level of the city was thronged with the Thursday colors of the buyers. Women in canary yellow chitons and men in pseudo-Tyrolean outfits that were jade and leather and fit very tightly, save for the balloon pants. When the Harlequin appeared on the still-being-constructed shell of the new efficiency shopping center, his bullhorn to his elfishly laughing lips, everyone pointed and stared, and he berated them. Why do you let them order you about? Why let them tell you to hurry and scurry like ants or maggots? Take your time. Saunter a while. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the breeze. Let life carry you at your own pace. Don't be slaves of time. It's a hell of a way to die, slowly, by degrees. Down with the TikTok man. Who's the nut? Most of the shoppers wanted to know. Who's the nut? Oh, wow, I'm going to be late again. i got to run. And the construction gang in the shopping center received an urgent order from the office of the master timekeeper that the dangerous criminal, known as the Harlequin, was atop their spire, and their aid was urgently needed in apprehending him. The work crew said no, they would lose time on their construction schedule. But the TikTok man managed to pull the proper threads of governmental webbing, and they were told to cease work and catch that nitwit up there in the spire with a bullhorn. So, a dozen and more burly workers began climbing into their construction platforms, releasing the A-grab plates and rising toward the Harlequin. After the debacle in which, through the Harlequin's attention to personal safety, no one was seriously injured, the workers tried to reassemble and assault him again. But it was too late. The Harlequin had vanished. It had attracted quite a crowd, however, and the shopping cycle was thrown off by hours, simply hours. The purchasing needs of the system were, therefore, falling behind, and so measures were taken to accelerate the cycle for the rest of the day. But it got bogged down and speeded up, and they sold too many float valves and not nearly enough wigglers which meant that the poply ratio was off, which made it necessary to rush cases and cases of spoiling smash to stores that usually needed a case only every three or four hours. The shipments were bollocksed. The transshipments were misrooted. And in the end, even the swizzle-skid industries felt it. Don't come back till you have him, the TikTok man said very quietly, very sincerely, extremely dangerously. They used dogs. They used probes. They used cardioplate cross-offs. They used teepers. They used bribery. They used stick tights. They used intimidation. They used torment. They used torture. They used finks. They used cops. They used search and seizure. They used phaleron. They used betterment incentive. They used fingerprints. They used bertalon. They used cunning. They used guile. They used treachery. They used Raoul Mitgong. 
but he didn't help much. They used applied physics. They used techniques of criminology. And, what the hell, they caught him. After all, his name was Everett C. Marm, and he wasn't much to begin with, except a man who had no sense of time. Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTok man. Yeah, get stuffed, the Harlequin replied, sneering. You've been late a total of 63 years, 5 months, 3 weeks, 2 days, 12 hours, 41 minutes, 59 seconds, and point oh three six one 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 microseconds. You've used up everything you can, and more. I'm going to turn you off. Eh, scare someone else. I'd rather be dead than live in a dumb world with a bogeyman like you. It's my job. You're full of it. You're a tyrant. You have no right to order people around and kill them if they show up late. You can't adjust. You can't fit in. Uh, Unstrap me and I'll fit my fist into your mouth. You are a nonconformist. That didn't used to be a felony. It is now. Live in the world around you. I hate it. It's a terrible world. Not everyone thinks so. Most people enjoy order. I don't. And most of the people I know don't. Oh, that's not true. How do you think we caught you? I don't know. I'm not interested. A girl named Pretty Alice told us who you were. That's a lie. It's true. You unnerve her. She wants to belong. She wants to conform. I'm going to turn you off. Then do it already and stop arguing with me. I'm not going to turn you off. You're an idiot. Repent, Harlequin. Eh, get stuffed. So they sent him to Coventry. And in Coventry, they worked him over. It was just like what they did to Winston Smith in 1984 which was a book none of them knew about. But the techniques are really quite ancient. And so they did it to Everett C. Marm. And one day, quite a long time later, the Harlequin appeared on the communications web, appearing elfish and dimpled and bright-eyed, and not at all brainwashed. And he said he had been wrong, that it was a good, a very good thing indeed, to belong and be right on time, hip-ho, and away we go. And everyone stared up at him on the public screens that covered an entire city block, and they said to themselves, Yeah, well, well, you see, he was just a nut after all. And if that's the way the system is run, then let's do it that way, because it doesn't pay to fight City Hall, or in this case, the TikTok man. So Everett C. Marm was destroyed, which was a loss, because of what the Rose said earlier. But you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, and in every revolution, a few die who shouldn't. But they have to, because that's the way it happens. And if you make only a little change, then it seems to be worthwhile. Or, to make the point lucidly. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, um, I, uh, well, I, I don't know how, um, well, uh, to tell you this, but, um, well, you were, uh, three minutes late. Uh, the schedule is, uh, um, <laughs> it's a little bit off. He grinned. Sheepishly. That's ridiculous, murmured the TikTok man behind his mask. Check your watch. And then he went into his office, going, That story was titled, Repent, Harlequin, said the TikTok man. A Nebula, award-winning short story by Harlan Ellison. It appears in the book, Nebula Award Stories, edited by Damon Knight. This is Michael Hansen speaking. Technical production for Mindwebs by Leslie Hilsenhoff. Mindwebs is a production of WHA Radio in Madison. A service of University of Wisconsin Extension.